Hi everyone, today I'd like to talk about the Neom project, specifically the line, which is part of this overall complex of projects. This project will be built at the north end of the Red Sea, and it's the brainchild of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. It's part of the Saudi Arabia's 2030 vision, which aims to get the country moved off of dependency on oil for revenue and develop other diverse projects where residential and tourists and uh, just really destination type projects to bring people in from all over the world. The announced cost of this project is $500 billion, but many people say the true cost is gonna be somewhere closer to $1 trillion. The project was announced in early 2021 and construction began in the fall of 2022. In this video, I'll give you an overview of this project and I'll answer the question about how viable is this project? It's hugely ambitious, certainly colossal, and has never been attempted before in the history of the world. So my take about this project is gonna be based on my 36 years plus experience as a geotechnical engineer, most of which has involved some aspect of construction phase work. When completed, this project will house a total of nine million residents. The line building is really a series of buildings connected together that runs along a length of about 105 miles in the desert. The building will consist of two outer rows of skyscrapers with an interior portion for living space, for green space, and so on. These outer row of skyscrapers will be 1,640 feet tall, and the width of the overall structure is gonna be 656 feet. To put this height in perspective, one World Trade Center in New York has a height of 1,776 feet, so just about 100 feet taller than this line project in Saudi Arabia. This city will be ultra modern with no cars, no motorcycles. Reportedly, there will be flying cars. The plan is to have the residents be able to walk with the five minutes to be able to get to services and entertainment and to purchase goods within the city. Also, the city reportedly is gonna involve a massive amount of surveillance. The reason for this is stated to be to help feed the AI, which is going to inform a lot of robots in how to maintain the city in terms of security, maintenance, cleaning, that sort of thing. And apparently the, the government's gonna pay the residents for access to their data. The city will be multi-level with the lowest level reserved for high-speed rail. The next level up will be for various infrastructure, water, sewer, power, and the top level will be for pedestrians among lots of trees and other greenery. All of the food will be produced at nearby farms. The water for the city will be produced through desalination from water from the Red Sea. If this sounds like science fiction, it probably is. Reportedly, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia was inspired by the original Blade Runner movie from back in the 80s. This would be the largest structure ever completed by man with a population density of 260,000 residents per square kilometer. To put that in perspective, the city of Manila in the Philippines has a population density of 44,000 residents per square kilometer. As you can see, this project's in the middle of the desert. It's been reported that over 20,000 indigenous tribe members have been evicted by the Saudi government to make way for this project. Also reportedly, several of them have been killed by Saudi Arabia security forces and some have been given capital punishment for resisting the forced relocations. As I mentioned, this project broke ground in 2021 and is scheduled for completion in the year 2030. Some people have questioned whether this project is a complete waste of time and resources, and many doubt that it'll ever be completed. Others see it as an exciting signature project for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and see it as a possible investment opportunity. So let's piece together some of the public information about the construction that's been performed to date. This will give us some idea as to what the likely outcome will be for this project. Looking at some aerial photographs that have been released for the early construction, you can see that there's been early grading work to define the outline of the building structure. After that, it appears that dozens of drilled shaft rigs have been mobilized to the job site. It's been reported that they're installing five to six and a half foot diameter drilled shafts to a depth of 230 feet below the ground. A drilled shaft is a type of deep foundation that involves drilling a hole through soil and sometimes rock to create an open hole. A reinforcing cage is inserted into this hole and then the hole is backfilled with concrete. Now this is where I wanna rely on my experience for hundreds of construction projects, and in particular, drill shaft projects and driven pile projects to get an idea of how feasible the construction timeline is for this project. It's been reported that the number of construction contractors associated with the drill shaft work numbers in the few hundreds. So for argument's sake, let's assume that it's a thousand people that's involved with drill shaft construction at this point. Each drill shaft rig typically has at least three crew members for installation of shafts. 
So this would put an upper limit of about 300 drill shaft rigs for the project. To drill and place the reinforcing steel in the concrete in these shaft excavations would typically take two to three days per shaft. Now I'm assuming that these drill shafts are gonna be used to support the passenger train level and that the other levels will go above that. It really wouldn't make sense for them to first put in the drill shafts and then go back to excavate for the bottom level of the passenger train. It makes more sense to stay out of the groundwater and just given how they're putting in the drill shafts already, it makes sense that that's gonna be the lowermost level. Now, just for estimating purposes, let's assume that these drilled shafts are spaced at 12 feet on center. That would involve over two and a half million drilled shafts over the entire footprint of the line project. At current staffing levels, it would take them well over 200 years to install this number of drilled shafts. Now, I know this is just an estimate, but no matter how you slice it, it will take many decades to install a sufficient number of drilled shafts to support this size of project. And keep in mind, the rest of the building can't be built until the foundation in a given area has been completed. Now let's look at how many workers would likely be required for such a project. If we take uh, One World Trade Center in New York, that project involved 10,000 construction workers over a period of six years at a cost of $3.9 billion. If you use the same ratio of personnel in order to construct the line project as compared to One World Trade Center, it would take over a million workers for the line project. I don't think they have anywhere near that number of workers available, given that there's not enough residential accommodations nearby based on the aerial photographs that I've seen. This is a similar situation to the Hoover Dam. Its construction cost in today's dollars is about a billion dollars. That project took 5,200 people to build. In fact, they built the entire city of Boulder City just to accommodate the workers. So using the same ratio as Hoover Dam to the line project, it would take over two and a half million workers for the line project. Another thing to keep in mind is that the global annual construction market is $7 trillion. So at a cost of even $500 billion over a five year period, this one project would suck up 2% of worldwide construction capability. One last comparison I have is with the 10 million square foot Gigafactory in Austin, Texas that Tesla owns. It took two years to build and the footprint for that Gigafactory is 1 36th the size of the line project and they're planning to build the line project in a period of five years. So do you agree that although this project is ambitious, it's highly unlikely that this project will be completed to the same scope that's been promoted, and certainly it's unlikely it's gonna be completed in the five-year period. So what's the most likely reality for this project? You know, Saudi Arabia has nearly unlimited funding given their vast oil reserves, so money's not the problem. So the problem is purely logistical in terms of having enough people and enough time to complete a project of this magnitude. A recent example of a highly ambitious project in Saudi Arabia that hasn't been completed is the Jeddah Tower. When completed, this will be the tallest building in the world at 3,281 feet. It should have been completed by now, but construction has been paused for the last five years, reportedly due to a dispute involving the concrete supplier. So for the line, I think they'll probably get some key infrastructure in for a short segment of the project. They'll build a few modules and they'll be able to start moving people in in 2025. But you have to wonder how much of the rationale of this project was to serve as an excuse to evict all these tribe members to free the government up for future use of this land. Beyond that, there's been concerns about the poor human rights record of Saudi Arabia and the high level of surveillance that already exists relative to its citizens. In fact, some of the early expat professionals, architects and engineers left the project because of these reported human rights violations. So what happens if the residents of the line have a dispute with the government? The government could simply turn off the transportation, or worse. Keep in mind there's no roads or passenger cars or motorcycles in this entire building. Also, there have been several architects critical of the long linear nature of this project, stating that a circular project would be far more efficient. And this has to do with the average distance between any two people chosen at random within the building. You'd have much better accessibility with resources and movement of people with a circular structure, as this article points out from Scientific American. To me, this line project in Saudi Arabia would make an interesting prototype for a Mars colony, or with an arc-type structure like you saw with Cooper Station in the movie Interstellar. So what do you think? Would you live in such a facility? Or do you think it would be too much like living in an airport terminal or even a fancy prison? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section, and please stay tuned for future videos.